some old-fashioned ruckus for Mr. Mark Howard! Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Hello. Uh, what song is that? Oh, that was a good song. Uh, guys, give it up for Gollum over here, by the way. You never get to see this guy. And he's been working hard. Um, and give it up for the Canadian Don Pardo as well. He's working hard. That's an actual person. That's not a recording. Um, hi, everybody. This is awesome. Um, I, I wanted to say this, first of all. Guys, my name's Mark, and I'm from Calgary. And I am not nearly as racist as my shirt is. Uh, I'm really sorry. Um, somebody pointed out that I was wearing this shirt an hour ago, and I was like, ah, oh, fuck. I forgot all about that. Man, this shirt was so cool in like 2006 and then everything had to go bad. Um, hopefully we'll have a better night than he did. Um, guys, uh, is everybody happy? First of all, hey, all right, cool, that's good. Uh, we'll uh, soon change that. Uh, or, well, okay, we'll play with that a little bit with a little phrase that like, I'm, I'm so happy to be like unemployed just so I don't have to hear this phrase anymore because it's a little thing that I used to hear dozens of times that goes, welcome ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for coming to this team production meeting. Um, you see the people that are laughing? Those are the people with jobs. Uh, <laughs> well, they should have been like, welcome to this completely useless, yet for some reason still mandatory <laughs> team production meeting. Uh, see what I did there? That's called rubbing salt into your wounds. Uh, making like a terrible thing way worse. Um, that's like if a doctor was like, this illness will kill you. But don't worry about it, the world's gonna blow up anyways. And you're like, oh, thanks for that. God damn it. Um, yeah, but uh, for those of you, I guess, that don't have to go to meetings at your job or whatever, what it is, a meeting is just an event where the minutes are kept, but the hours are wasted. Uh, completely wasted. Oh, uh, God. Yeah, I can say that on Monday. Um, except for tonight, guys, we're going to have a good meeting together because uh, we're going to try to find ways together to improve morale at the workplace. Because some people really need it, and I agree. Uh, it's a horrible sign that if you were to take a cot and put it in a cubicle, all of a sudden that cubicle looks exactly like a prison cell. Uh, it's the same color scheme and everything. Like, they're not trying to hide where you are at all. It's an awful thing that, it, uh, like... Um, when you get to the point where it's like the highlight of your whole month is like, oh my god, three Fridays from now, I don't have to wear a tie. This is going to be spectacular. Like, that's all you have to look forward to. You're like, I can tell I'm starting to enjoy my job a little more because today I packed a lunch and I'm no longer packing heat. This is a great sign. I say. So, uh, for any of you guys tonight that uh, ha are like a boss, or you have people that work underneath you, like you look like you have a job, sir. This guy has a shirt with buttons on it, so that's why I'm like, ooh, Mr. Moneybags in the front row. I'm like, go back to Wall Street, man. Um, no, do you, do you uh, like have underlings? Do you have people that work? Oh, okay, shit. Well, man, you did a good job of making it look like you had a career. Um, <laughs> if anybody has uh, like people working underneath them, this is a, co a couple of things that you could do to like improve morale at the workplace. The, the first thing any boss should do, first of all, is at the very least learn your employees' names. You know what I mean? Like the only thing more demoralizing than when your boss doesn't know your name is when you and your boss have the same name and he still can't seem to remember it. Like, that, that happened to me, and he was like, "Oh, don't tell me it's on the edge of my tongue." I'm like, "It's on the edge of your desk, you idiot!" Like, right there, Just read it. I, uh, I had a boss one time, I was, he was giving a new employee a tour of all the cubicles and stuff. And he got to my desk and, and I didn't have a name tag or anything on it. So he just goes, and here we have a, a male employee. And just like walked away, what? Seriously? That's the best you could do? Uh, I, I felt like turning to the new employee and being like, yeah, you know how cows get branded so that the farmer can like tell them apart? <laughs> we don't get that level of recognition here, man. God, you can get murdered and no one would know you were even here. Uh, I'd love to be branded. Branding means you care. <laughs> um, anyway, that's sad. Uh, another thing you, you could do uh, is just try not to like rub it in that you clearly make more money than everyone else at the company. Uh, like my, my boss's parking spot was right next to the front door. And so you'd get to work like freezing. You'd get to the front door just as he came pulling up in his eco-friendly Hummer. Like fully equipped with you know heated seats and, and uh, 
veiny metal ball sack hanging off the bumper. I don't know if you guys see this. Do you see any? They're called truck nuts or some stupid thing. I don't know. What the hell? I grew up in Alberta and they're everywhere. I don't know what's going on. It's supposed to make your car look like a penis or something? Is that what's going on? Why is that a good thing? Is it to make up for your own lack of balls? Is that what those are doing there? Jesus. Anyway, that bothers me. Uh, but yeah, you get to, like, he'd come out of his vehicle and be like, oh man, traffic was terrible. I had to sit very snugly here in my roomy vehicle for like an extra 10 minutes. Uh, meanwhile, you're freezing. You got your free transit newspaper that you like scrounged off the floor of the bus. It's got like three different flavors of homeless urine on it. You're like, God damn it. Oh. And, and in your head, you'd have to be like, oh yeah, I know how you feel, chief. Uh, after the first two bus drivers made eye contact with me and then kept driving, uh, I guess they'll do that. I managed to sardine myself onto the third bus and breathe in everybody's fumes of bitterness. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and, and, and like he would wave things off with, like never use this expression, he, the most condescending of workplace phrases. He'd always go, well, you know, you can only do what you can do. Like, really? Thank you for that. I, I always thought I could do more for a second there, but thank you for reminding me of my limitations. Why would you say that? Okay, uh, guys, this whole set has been very negative. I, I see that now. But, but let's, let's end on a, on a happy note here. This is a cool kind of fun fact that I figured out. Uh, apparently, you work 100,000 hours in your lifetime. Uh, which to me is fantastic news, because at the rate that I'm going, I'm going to live to be 2,000 years old, everybody. <laughs> That's pretty badass. Guys, thanks so much, and stick around for the second half of the show. It'll be a fun time. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mark Howard!